Hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Todd Banner. Uh, well, regular viewers might notice another change in scenery. I'm back into what had been my office. As uh, regular viewers know, we are uh, in the process of selling our house. In fact, we have sold our house. We will be closing in a couple of weeks. We have also bought a condominium in our neighboring village of Forest Park, Illinois. And we'll be closing shortly after on that and then moving, which is so it's been really hectic here and I'm grabbing some time to do a short little video. Well, make sure the algorithm doesn't forget me. Anyway, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is I got a comment. Somebody commented on one of the videos I did on the ZS100, the Linux ZS100 slash TZ200 in other parts of the world other than, the, than North America um, about close up photography and Admittedly, it's really difficult to do good close-up photography with, a, with with that camera. One of the things is that the close focusing distance is actually the cl at, at its closest at the widest angle. And that's true of most point and shoots that at the telephoto end, especially with these long range super zoom type telephotos, they just don't focus very close. And also the ZS100 doesn't have filter rings, so you can't easily attach any kind of accessory close-up lens. However, the LX100 and the LX100 II actually do have a filter ring and uh, I actually have a, it's a 43 millimeter filter ring. I have a Hoya NXT filter, a decent quality UV filter on the front of mine because uh, you can't, there is a hood for the LX100, it's a screw-in hood. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to actually get one of those or not, but uh, at least we get some protection with the UV filter. And this is a high quality filter and there's not a whole lot of difference. And if I run into a problem, I can always take it off if I'm shooting into the sun. So uh, the LX100 does the same thing, and that is in the macro mode, your closest focusing is at the wide angle. You got to be really, I mean, that's actually, it's actually focusing on my finger um, at that distance. So that's pretty close, but that's not going to work real well for things like skittish insects. So the fact that you can screw a lens on the uh, screw a filter or an accessory close-up lens on the front that got me to thinking, why not try it? If you remember, um, and I'll, I'll link to this video as well down below, I very early on I did a video about using accessory close-up lenses um, in this case the Canon uh, 500D there's also a 250D not to be confused with Canon Rebels the D stands for two dual element so Canon but they have um, dual element close-up lenses so these are highly corrected high quality close-up lenses and they're not inexpensive um, or up close to hundred dollars for those things also, being as beefy as they are, you probably don't want to put something that heavy on the LX100 because of the motorized zoom, and they don't come in a 43 millimeter size, so you're out of luck if you want to use that type of a close-up lens. However, I was uh, perusing Amazon one day not too long ago, and I saw a set of four accessory close-up lenses with that are marketed by Vivitar. Uh, those of us who have been in photography, photography for a long time are quite familiar with the Vivitar name. I early on owned two Vivitar 283 flashes. Uh, those were really, really nice flashes. And uh, when Beth and I started dating, she had a Nikon FG and the Nifty 50, and she wanted a zoom lens, and we got a Vivitar Series 1 28 to 105 lens. And I think uh, the, there's I think three different versions of that lens. This one, I believe, was the Chiron ver version, manufactured by Chiron. Vivitar is a marketing company. I don't think they manufacture anything. So uh, that was a nice lens. Flared like hell pointing into the sun, but sharp as all heck. So you just avoided uh, pointing in a little light. But uh, these are marketed as Series 1, and this one is the glasses. Yeah, put my glasses on here. This is the plus two diopter, so that means this is actually equivalent to the Canon 500D. Um, 
the plus four diopter is equivalent to the 250D. No, oh, I can't and uses that nomenclature. You have to divide by a, a, a thousand by that number to get the diopter. These are single element lenses. That means they are not as highly corrected as uh, the Canon or other dual element close-up accessory lenses, which means you're gonna get some aberrations. There's gonna be some chromatic aberration, probably some spherical aberration, but $20, you know? So why not? I went ahead and ordered it. And it uh, comes in a nice little packet. Here is the plus 10. You can tell the difference. The plus 10 is quite, heavy, quite a bit heftier than the um, less powerful ones. Uh, you put this on your lens uh, at the long end, you still get pretty close. So what I did was, and originally, uh, I went out in the backyard here, and we have some wildflowers. Uh, most of the plants we have are native. And I, I tried photographing Virginia bluebells with um, the one, the two, the four, and the 10 diopter uh, close-up lenses. Unfortunately, it was a really windy day. Didn't work out too well. But uh, I came in, we have a plastic, actually we got three plastic plants, not ours, belongs to our realtor. So when she came in and staged the house, she brought in these little plastic plants. So I popped that on my desk and used the four lenses. So here, uh, with my description, uh, are those images. And then I actually did go out later and get some pretty decent images uh, with these close-up lenses. So here is this magnificent plastic plant shot with the LX100 on my office desk uh, with no close-up attachment. And here it is with the plus one diopter close-up attachment. Get you a little bit closer. Not a whole lot of difference though. Here's the plus two ad adapter. And uh, now we're starting to see uh, that we're getting uh, significantly closer than we can with uh, no close-up attachment. Here's the plus four adapter. And, you know, uh, obviously you're quite a bit closer. And the other thing is, is it's relatively sharp. I mean, in the center, those uh, I focused on those top two blades or leaves. And um, it's, it's decently sharp. And here is the plus 10 adapter. And it, although it's still sharp, you can see some pretty obvious uh, chromatic aberration, but really not horrible and fairly easy to deal with uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you want to use. And just for kicks, I use the plus 10 adapter to um, photograph the in, uh, in directions of, uh, uh, maybe this was an Annie Hesman, I forget what it is. But uh, you can see it's sharp in the center. It gets soft towards the edges. You can see chromatic aberration. Um, so that's something to really be aware of is that these are not highly corrected optics. Now here is the plus 10 diopter out in the real world. These are Virginia bluebells and uh, still focusing quite, quite close. Uh, this is not too far from the front of the lens. It's relatively sharp, but what I did was I ran it through Topaz Photo AI and Here's that image. You can't, I don't think you can really see the difference in the video, but it is uh, noticeable on screen. Here's a tulip, and I can't remember. This is either the plus four or the plus 10 adapter. Should take better notes, but um, either way, it's not bad. It's pretty sharp. And finally, we have the plus 10 adapter with a brand new basswood leaves. Um, basswood is also known as American linden. And the thing is, the sharpness is not going to come across in the video, but looking at it in Lightroom, zoomed in, it's actually quite sharp. So there you have it. I mean, for $20, they're okay. They're not bad. Yeah, chromatic aberrations there, you can fix that pretty easily. They're not going to be, as, they're not as sharp as the Canons, but hey, if you put that through uh, a sharpener like Topaz uh, uh, sharpening, uh, AI sharpening, it comes out okay. So my attitude is, you know, if you've got an LX100, um, you're traveling light and you don't want to carry a lot of stuff, it's not a hassle to carry this little wallet with these close-up attachments. And you can get a lot closer at the long end uh, than you can without them. So check them out. I hope this was interesting and uh, helpful to you. So if it was, bop that like button. If you've subscribed so far, thank you. It's a big help to me. 
Next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the photojournalism I've been doing with uh, the local um, paper, newspaper group. It's been pretty interesting, and um, we'll, we'll talk about that next time, and I'll show some of the images that, uh, that I've shot uh, using Micro Four Thirds equipment, as well as the LX100 too. I'm Todd Banner. I'll see you next time.